long have you been working with Andy? Um, at this point in time, it's like six months, not too long. Um, came on in the beginning of November last year, uh, working in the transmission department, like preparing all the transmissions for the R5s and the WRCs and stuff. I'm sure the schedule, but your viewers would like to know, how did you get that job? Um, well, I, I guess it's a combination of things, because um, before that I was, you know, freelancing in the UK, working with a lot of other teams, then moved on to Tesla for two years. Uh, then after Tesla, I uh, was working for um, a Swedish touring car team called Flash Engineering, and then um, we got a call about the job in Germany for um, Hyundai Motorsport. What advice would you give other local mechanics that want to get that kind of achievement? Um, I would say, to be honest, the first thing to do is, is never give up because um, in this sport you can't you can't ever tr like give up. Like the first time I moved overseas, it was it was really really hard. Like nobody was replaying. No, like, like you didn't have the experience. You didn't know anybody. Nobody knew what you were capable of doing, and it just takes one chance. And <clears throat> one of the other things is, uh, that you can do, which a lot of people may find a bit weird the best thing to do is to fail because when you fail you know what to do differently the next time how to do it better and how to come back stronger faster and harder and I think that's what I did I did a lot of failing <laughs> a lot of times so I could be I should be an expert in, in failing right now but like I guess that's the, the hardest part never give up and always learn from your mistakes what's the fast difference in teams there and here um, I would say the basis is the same, but it's the resources, I would say, and with resources you get you get um, openings for different people and um, obviously more engineers, more mechanics and stuff like that, but saying that is, it's professional as well, too, whereas down here we do it for more sport. Um, with regards to things, like certain little small things that like we're in team kit, we can only wear a team kit when we're actually on event, not going to, not going to an event as well too late. Only on events we wear a team kit. You're not supposed to wear it any any other time. Um, obviously the cars are different because there's a different rule structure and what's not. And um, I think the, the, the biggest the biggest change is um, the biggest change is uh, basically obviously the cars, the rules, and the professionality of it. Because obviously we do it here for fun. They do it as a job. And no, it's my job as well too. So it's, I think that's the biggest, um, the biggest difference. Um, I've decided to change the Escort and decide to drive a Citroen DS3 R3 Max for this year. Um, one, to have a little bit better fun, but two, um, that's pretty much the way the rules and regulations are going towards the R3 classes. So uh, that's what we decided for this year, and um, we're looking forward to it. The car is a 1600 Turbo. Uh, the car came from Ireland from a WRC competitor, Daniel McKenna. Um, pretty much paddle shift, um, boss suspension all round, and a fully homologated uh, FIA car. So, come down in the gear, Dad. When you do so, keep going. Remember I said so? Up a gear, Dad! <laughs> So I don't want you to get licked down.